Okay, just like where Virginia is immediately across the river from the United States Capitol, a significant portion of the region we're talking about, including Gatineau, is found in the province of Quebec. It's not extremely heavily populated, but it, it being the region, but it is indeed growing and anticipated to do so, presenting serious challenges related to pressure on urban infrastructure, most notably local transit services. And compounding these demographic pressures is the language conflict between the largely English-speaking province of Ontario and the majority Francophone Quebec. And this is the primary equity consideration in this region. And owing to the fragmented nature of governance, we've talked about all these layers of different jurisdictions, many services are performed independently and duplicated on each side of the Ottawa River. This further hinders the ability to bring together local and regional goals and visions. And before I move on, I'd like to talk a second about the concept of the sustainable transportation plan itself and the applicability to this region. So sustainability in the realm of transportation systems generally refers to striving for system effectiveness and system efficiency. These systems should have minimal impact on the environment while supporting economic activity and improving the social quality of life. The plan I've developed adds to an existing interprovincial transit strategy, which only focused on the integration of duplicated local bus service and future transit infrastructure improvements. Now to transform a transit plan into a regional sustainable, I'm sorry, a, a specific transit plan into a sustainable transportation plan requires an evaluation of all options and an understanding of how they're treated in each constituent municipality. The elements I'm proposing pay special attention to pedestrian and bicycle facilities, vehicle parking supply and pricing, land use strategies, freight handling, and street design. I'm also going to take a look at preferred finance mechanisms and which might be most feasible to implement at a regional level in light of the governance structure in this area. So I've included this aerial view of the core of the National Capital Region. Note that North is actually at the bottom of your page. I did it so that you'd be a little more familiar with the lay of the land and locations, which I'll refer to in the future. So if you can see my pointer here along the bluff overlooking the Ottawa River is the government center. You have the Parliament Building, the Supreme Court of Canada, a lot of supportive office space in the downtown core. At lower left, this bridge is the McDonald Cartier Bridge. It carries 70% of interprovincial truck traffic. That's to say 70% of freight traffic crossing the river crosses on this bridge. And the associated issue with that is just off the screen to the left, there's an avenue called King Edward Avenue, which we'll examine in greater detail. That's become the de facto primary freight route, and it's really it was really never intended to be to be this way. On at right center, you see a large void here. This is the Labreton Flats area. Labreton Flats is something of a casualty akin to the urban renewal period in the United States. However, instead of uh, putting up non-supportive built environment, nothing was put up at all. It's been sat on and argued about for about 50 years, and directly across the river from Le Breton Flats is what was called the old hull sector of the city of Gatineau. In Canada, amalgamation is much easier. They frequently bring municipalities together into super municipalities to consolidate on services. Um, hull had its own downtown. Much of the area here along these waterfalls was mills and things of this nature. A lot of this downtown was raised but instead of left fallow, built up with government office complexes during Pierre Trudeau's push to get government jobs on both sides of the river. And so within the National Capital Region, there's an agency known as the National Capital Commission. This agency is funded by the federal government and is responsible for guiding the development and or the preservation of federally owned land. It works in tandem with the municipalities in the region to regionally address interprovincial travel issues. 
In 2011, the NCC partnered with its component cities and the primary Quebec transit operator, the STO, to commission the interprovincial transit strategy. This formed the basis for this project and the National Capital Commission went on to be sort of a sponsoring agency to me, uh, providing me with material, sitting down for meetings and things of this nature. There's many other organizations besides the NCC doing planning work in and around the capital, which influence both their plan as well as my work. Plans such as the Ottawa Transportation Master Plan, which is the best long range transportation plan that I've seen, as well as Gatineau's Sustainable Mobility Plan and the STO Strategic Plan lay the groundwork for responding to sustainability challenges such as energy consumption, greenhouse gas emission, atmospheric pollution, public health, and even housing and transport affordability. A number of major projects were either under construction or recently completed at the time of publishing of the Interprovincial Transit Strategy. The first is the Rappi Bus. The Rappi Bus is a 10 station BRT and parallel cycle track along an old rail right of way on the Gatineau side. It opened in 2003. Transfers are made at the Montcalm station, which I'll point out. Uh, transfers to other bus service going into Ottawa, sometimes other STO service. Um, the goal of Rappi Bus was to reduce the burden on limited bridge crossings of buses. The second major project, and it's under construction right now, is called the Confederation Line. It's a $2.13 billion, 12 and a half kilometer light rail route, uh, much of that cost owing to a downtown transit tunnel, which is conceived to relieve choke points in the current busway system. Ottawa has a very extensive busway system, extremely well ridden. Up to 180 buses per hour would find themselves on a pair of one-way streets in the downtown core during peak periods, which you can imagine is really just bus to bus to bus. And uh, it's a serious choke point right in the heart of downtown. And so that's what the Confederation Line is conceived to relieve. Construction began in the spring of 2013. It should be finished in 2018. And the graphic is a visualization of all existing transit infrastructure as well as recommended infrastructure changes and additions, really the complete build out from the interprovincial transit strategy. I can show you by pointing that the Rappi bus, its eastern terminus is here at La Brosse, the Montcalm station is here. This map shows it eventually converted to rail. The Confederation line would start in the west here at Tunney's Pasture and proceed out to the east at Blair. This would essentially replace the central and eastern busways in Ottawa. The blue represents either present or future busways. I know this South BRT is existent. I believe this one on the west is also existent. There isn't much expansion per se with the busways. So on to my recommendations. Putting the pedestrian first would ensure that costly new road infrastructure is limited, that less costly and more environmentally friendly options are promoted, and that neighborhoods are linked in the most efficient way possible. The first pedestrian program included is the implementation of some complete streets principles, especially in the Albert and Slater Street corridors. That's the aforementioned downtown portion of the busway, which was, will have a completely different character in 2018 once the Confederation line opens. And the second pedestrian program would be the addition of a ped bike bridge crossing the Ottawa River to better link the federal office concentrations. Right now, it would take about 25 minutes to walk between office cores. By and large, what happens is employees use a lot of taxis to conduct governmental business activity. This could be reduced to 15 minutes with a, a bridge comparable to the one shown in my graphic. With respect to bicycling, in addition to merging bicycle policy, Ottawa's is very much focused on network and infrastructure. Gatineau is much more focused on parking bicycles and the educational programs for both kids and adults. The addition of the bicycle boulevard typology is 
generally missing from all literature and could be very useful because the street grid is very supportive in this region. Um, I identified three highly suitable candidate corridors on each side of the river and you know I won't go into exactly what they are here but um, this is something that can be considered to enhance an already decent cycling plan and already decent cycling infrastructure. Next I examined land use and sites where multimodality has or could have a big influence were examined. This includes the area surrounding the Montcalm Ravi bus transfer station, which we talked about, uh, Ottawa's Via Rail station, which is somewhat southeast of the downtown right now, and the but the, the these two sites were touched on, but the majority of the attention was paid to the Le Breton Flats area, which I talked about earlier, the legacy urban renewal era mistake, as it is really the blankest canvas since the urban renewal efforts were largely botched, and it's also the location where a confederation line station will be in the future. And so noting that while 42% of individual trips in the capital region begin and end within, within the same trans district, and a trans district is roughly equivalent to a zip code, um, larger districts are on the periphery of the region, 42% of individual trips begin and end in those districts, only 24% of commuter trips did so. So therefore, zoning and permitting should be cooperative and conducive to very small blocks of mixed uses in order to reduce trip lengths and meet more of the needs of citizens within their home area. This would include allowing light industrial facilities in mixed neighborhoods, something not really foreseen when zoning codes were developed. And it's important to not forget that the re-knitting of urban fabric is often a very delicate task and should be historically sensitive. And you can take cues from the pre-automobile area pre-automobile era as a less energy intensive period in time. Active parking management can contribute to regional vision and not just in core districts. The plan recommends that the real cost to municipalities, developers, and private businesses of providing parking should be better understood and strategies developed to unbundle those costs share parking facilities and coordinate the appropriate pricing of both public and private parking supply. And as the capital region continues to grow, the issue of heavy truck traffic in the urban core continues to grow with it. Suitable freight facilities are sorely lacking. Currently the primary link between Ontario Highway 417, which is this red line running along the, the south, and Quebec's auto routes 5 and 50 up here is King Edward Avenue a widened residential street which now functionally bisects Ottawa's lower town. This arrangement presents a major barrier to sustainable development and pedestrian safety, contributes negatively to air quality and noise conditions, and bottlenecks freight traffic in the region. A shaded area there represents where freight traffic more suited to the highways is forced to use, utilize the surface street network. And as only 6% of heavy truck trips are through trips, meaning neither originating nor terminating in the capital region, distribution hubs at strategic points on each side of the river have been proposed to receive, combine, and redistribute freight more appropriately. And while I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to transit up to this point, there are some things that the region can continue to do to enhance it and provide more modal choice when attempting to tackle the interprovincial pedestrian connectivity problem. The interprovincial transit strategy recommended use of a circulator, and my plan more specifically elaborates on this concept as a complementary option to the proposed pedestrian bridge when the weather is inclement, which it often is in Ottawa, often very cold, a lot of snow. Such a service also marks a unique opportunity, an opportunity to begin to bring together transit offerings under a regional banner through the use of rebranding. Regardless of the technology employed, whether it's a small electric bus or a streetcar, that doesn't really matter. The, the circulator should have distinct branding, which would be identifiable as an interprovincial service and would plant the seed for better visual integration of other services in the future. So to wrap it up, in an environment where one third of residents identify a primary official language other than English, it's necessary to ensure equal access to information. It's, it's actually city policy of the city of Ottawa that all public information be provided bilingually. 
Conversely, the Gatineau Strategic Plan references sensitivity toward a significant Anglophone population in Quebec. Bilingual accommodation should continue to be an overarching objective of any transportation plan for the capital region. But none of this can be done without financing, and local options are often necessary to supplement or stand alone in the absence of federal and, and state slash provincial sources. When seeking the appropriate financing mechanism to support sustainable transportation, the instrument must support the user pays principle, not unnecessarily distort the economy, allow for fair and progressive collection, and encourage movement towards sustainable modes. The plan, this plan, my plan, identifies regional fuel tax and the expansion of parking pricing as satisfying these criteria. But while it's relatively simple to identify desirable funding methods, it's another thing to administer the programs in the capital region due to all the jurisdiction, jurisdictional conflict. And while the NCC mentioned earlier has regional focus, it only retains authority over federally owned land and has no taxation authority of its own. So despite a low current probability, changes to governance and policy which would allow for creation of a regional sustainable transportation authority must be considered. Once these modal additions, infrastructure recommendations, and development projects are integrated into the existing transit strategy framework, the overall sustainability of the national capital region is increased. The legitimacy of the plan is strengthened by adhering to the principles already decided in more local planning processes. But the biggest challenge still remains the, the ability to oversee, fund, and enforce regional initiatives. As I just said a moment ago, future cooperation of all level, at levels of at all levels of all governments and a fundamental willingness to change interprovincial policies will be required to realize progress on these objectives. Thanks. Questions? Either text or 